two, three. Who is, who is the other one? I can only think of three. We got two on campus. This guy. Salon, wait, what? Solange. Solange, Tay. Tay, and then we got the two people on campus. And Nevelson. And Nevelson. So we hit our goal of five, and now we need one with member present. Okay. okay. Have you heard the message we share as missionaries? Yeah. You have? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, what do you think about that? I believe in God also. That's, That's good great. to hear. All That's right. good to hear. All righty. What's like, up, man? I don't know, it's interesting because when you guys put on your uniform, your uniform, I don't know if you call We're it robots. <laughs> we believe that God reached out in love and he restored Jesus Christ's church on the earth. We believe that in the year 1820, there was a young man by the name of Joseph Smith. I'm still me, you know. Obviously, some of the things I do are my lifestyle has changed completely. I spend all day, every day doing missionary work, thinking missionary work, um, you know, and knock on random doors in white shirt and tie and try and share a message about Jesus Christ. Someone's in there watching TV. It's funny because sometimes you'll look at like the, the little eye hole and you can see if there's light in the background. You can see if somebody comes up to look through it. And so I'll always wave at them. And, and you can see the person like, oh, man. And you can hear them. They start to unlock it. And then they see it's us. And they'll lock it back up and walk away. Oh, I think about home every day. I'd be lying if I said I didn't. You know, I, I definitely thought it was going to be a lot of hard work. But I was looking forward to that. Because if it's not hard, I don't enjoy it. So, and it, it has been tough, but not nearly as tough as I thought it would be. I've received a lot of strength. We're in charge of, for the campus, like the fifth ward, we teach all the girls and the elders are in the same ward, so they teach all the guys. In a normal home ward, like if there's just one set of missionaries, we would teach anybody. But since we have two sets here, we just divide it. All in all, throughout the world, um, our missionary force of over 50,000 does a very, very good job. I mean, for the elders, they do it for two years, and for the sisters, for a year and a half. I'm from a little place called Holiday, Utah. San Diego. Las Vegas, Nevada. Eugene, Oregon. This is my second mission. I came back from one because of a bunch of health problems I had. And was dating a girl, had a job, doing real estate and mortgages. And I wasn't so sure that I wanted to go back out. I'd say I miss the small things that happen within the family the most. As far as telephoning or speaking with, we get to do that twice a year. So, yeah. Yeah, it's on Christmas and Mother's Day. So, look forward to those days. Just to connect so well with my sisters, and I just miss them, just like having that gab session. You can talk for like three hours straight with them. I think that's what I miss the most. I have a little sister uh, who's just turned 14 and hear all about their dance performances, and she's starting to sing now, and, and things, you know, that I think while I was at home I took a little bit for granted. But now, you know, when you hear about it, it makes you kind of, you know, like get excited and wish you could be there to, to be with your family and enjoy those memories. When you're on a mission, the world back there, in your mind, it kind of stopped. Mm -hmm. And like, you know things are still happening back there, but it's not really reality. And so, like, I'll go back and I'll pick up where I left off, but everyone else, their life went on. As a missionary, you've been asked to, you know, focus your efforts upon you know, what we do as missionaries, teaching people and, and serving others. For young volunteers, they're extremely comfortable uh, greeting people. And probably that is probably because of being missionaries and out having to meet with people, visitors all the time. Mm -hmm. It prepares them for something like this, you yeah. know, where they're used to greeting strangers and they know how to present themselves and uh, they do really do an excellent job. We're just going to start off telling you a little bit about what the building you're in right now um, really was and how it came to be. What you're sitting in today actually is a replica of the 1902 uh, building that they had. It was originally made in 1845. Um, as you can see just right here, it was a little bit smaller than it is right now. But are there any questions about any of that or anything else you wanted to ask before we keep going? Right here. Elder Barrett. 
Yeah. Yeah, we're missionaries from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Like what we do as part of our community volunteer work. I don't know if you heard us introducing the other group. When they're here, they're just as, uh, as proper as they could be. I've never known them to uh, try to proselytize uh, anybody. They do background checks on the um, volunteers. Oh. If, if, and if you have a social security number? I, I think I do have one, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I said Crick. You do you really? Yeah. Southern, yeah Southern. I love Crick. That's lazy I don't that's say it because that's, I say it because that's the fun way to say it. Okay. See, again, the lazy talk. <laughs> because I'm not out here as John Barrett. I'm out here as an ambassador of Jesus Christ. I'm out here to share his gospel with people. I'm out here to tell them about his message, about the restoration. And so for me, when the rejection takes place, um, it hurts more than if it was me, because I feel like something much greater than myself is being rejected. We made the claim, no, the true church that Jesus Christ organized when he was on the earth was taken from the earth. And that in the, now in the spring of 1820, a young 14-year-old boy was very confused by religion. He read in the Bible, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally. And so he decided to go pray. And then we make the claim that Joseph Smith, was visited by God the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. That's a pretty bold claim to say that God and Jesus Christ visited me. And then he also made some claims that three years later he was visited by an angel that told him where gold plates were buried in a hill. And from that record that he received four years later, he translated it by the gift and power of God. And we have it in today in what's called the Book of Mormon. And he also claimed that while he was translating the Book of Mormon, he was visited by other disciples and followers of Christ, literally John the Baptist, Peter, James, and John, who gave to him priesthood authority, what we consider the authority to organize the church that Christ had when he was on the earth. And then we said, so Joseph Smith restored the church of Jesus Christ in these latter days. Therefore, it's the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. People typically don't or they, they say that we're not Christian because we don't believe in the creeds, um, the Nicene Creed. We don't believe in the Trinity. We believe that God, the Father, and Jesus Christ are separate. And so many people we talk to are like, oh yeah, I believe that too. And we say, okay, but your church doesn't believe that. And they're like, it doesn't? And we're like, no, they don't. The Mormon church is an unorthodox church, a church that has veered from traditional Christianity and uh, we see the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints as being a, a, a sect, a, a sectarian group in the sense that uh, they, have, they have pulled away from uh, Christianity and its historical expression. We believe that after the apostles were killed because of the wickedness of the people, that that priesthood authority that they had that it was no longer on the earth. That is that none of the churches at the time were true. They had inherited states of apostasy or states of falsehood. And because of that, there was a need for a restoration of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, God has uh, humbled me to the point that I realize I'm not the only one, and I keep working on that. But every once in a while, that part of me wants to get up there, you know, and, and go there. But no, it, it doesn't bother uh, me, and, and I don't think it bothers uh, uh, a majority of the people. I mean, they understand that, you know, uh, it, it's an approach to faith that they're looking at and, and, and wrestling with. I had a lot of trouble with a non-denominational Christian group I joined and um, I had been working with them this whole year and when I you know brought up the fact that I was you know pretty much gonna be a member of the LDS church they told me that I wouldn't be able to be in that group anymore which was kind of a shock since they were you know supposed to be a non-denominational and that was a lot of stress and um, the sisters were just there through that whole process it took like a while for me to just deal with all those negative things coming at me and they were definitely there to just you know help like point to scriptures and to pray with me and to just be there and help out and the um, elders helped out with like giving blessings and stuff and just to try to comfort with that so hey what's happening man what's up? Um, we're just missionaries from the Church of Jesus Christ Latter-day Saints okay. yeah I'm Elder Barra by the way
Yeah, what's your name? Marshall. Marshall? Good to meet you, Marshall. Good to meet you, man. Well, yeah, we just go around sharing a message um, that's very important to us. Reason being is we've prayed about it, and we believe that God has answered us, and we've come to the knowledge that it's true. And so we just quite simply want to go around and give everyone else an opportunity to hear the message and find out for themselves if it's true. Well, we appreciate it, man. I mean, would there be a time we might be able to talk to you some more about it? Or? I don't know. Your name's Marshall, right? Would it be all right if we got your number, maybe give you a call sometime, see if we could work something out? The impact is greatest on the missionary mm -hmm. um, because these people brand themselves by wearing suits or other things that really mark them out as Mormon missionaries. They anticipate being ridiculed, having the door shut in their face, having people yell at them, that it is an experience of persecution that replicates the persecution that earlier is so important in earlier history of, of the Mormon Church. So it solidifies the missionary with his or her past and gets that person to identify uh, with being a Mormon because they have really risked their status and confidence in the world uh, to, to put their faith on the line. To me, something I've realized is being out here on a mission, when you lose yourself in the service of others, that you could have spent every making, waking moment up until that point just working on yourself and you wouldn't have grown as much as if you had lost yourself in the service of others. You know, they recognize you as a missionary, somebody from a church, but at the same time, they want to know that you're a normal person and that you're not, you know, some freak or something like that. Starting out as a missionary, it's really hard to find a balance between your personality and your missionary mindset all the time and so that was really hard at first because I didn't feel like anybody knew who I really was I guess because you you're supposed to stay focused in your missionary zone all the time mm -hmm. but once you kind of get the hang of everything it's easier to to feel like yourself. I'm not not as crazy or goofy as I normally would be but as far as how I act towards people, or as far as what I do, or work ethic, I think it's, I think it's pretty well the same. It's, it's interesting right here for music, because there's so many people, especially rap music, people just roll down their windows and play it. So I have a general idea about what the popular songs are right now, just because you hear the same songs over and over, you know? But movies, movies, you, I mean, it'll probably be weird going back, have somebody talk about a movie that came out a year ago, you're just like, last movie I saw was, like Batman Begins or something like that. Mormons are very good at creating community and support systems and safety nets. And so joining a Mormon community is a way to feel connected with other people in supportive, caring relationships. Mormons uh, are excellent at being able to create communities. One of the worst things you could do to me is put me somewhere alone. I'd get, my mind would go nuts if I was sitting in my room by myself for too long a time, which is why I, I guess I'm not the best studier when it comes to schoolwork. It's too, uh, too lonely for me. But being with a companion, especially when, I mean, when you can joke around with that person and you have a common goal and you're unified in what you're doing, really makes it enjoyable. That way if yes. we're angry at each other, we just run in the bathroom and shut the door. <laughs> That's what I do. It hasn't happened yet. Oh. <laughs> Power 90s, you know what those are? No. Where you spin up on your hands? Could you do something or is that like inappropriate? I, I wouldn't even want to try. Okay. Because this is the last time I did it. And I was doing it and my arm kicked out and I started head spinning on my forehead on the concrete. And so blood was going everywhere and my buddies were yelling and stuff. And so that's, that's one of my break dancing stories. <laughs> I wear this name tag that the largest words on there are Jesus Christ. And actually, I think it may be Elder Barrett, but it's, it's pretty close. But, uh, but when, you, when you carry a name like Jesus Christ um, on you, I think they're expecting you to act as he would. Um, whether that's diligence in the work, just being out, working, um, I'd say one of the main things is not being negative and just being positive. 
because to me, I this gospel's fun. I love it. It makes me happy, and I know it's going to make other people happy. So there's nothing better I can be doing. The truth of it is, if if you're not having fun while you're on a mission, it's going to be pretty miserable. Um, but I mean, you know, this is a, probably the best experience I've ever had, and it's definitely because I, I try and make it fun. Of a white Christmas. <laughs> That's enough. That was so awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Man, you That's really what, good. In the morning, we practice a little bit. Really? The shower. No. Yeah. Do you guys have one shower? Or that yeah, we got two and shower. Well, next we one shower. We just showered obviously different times. We got <laughs> so kind of a bad. slow, slow hot water heater, so we gotta <laughs> spread it out a little bit too. I assumed you showered at different times. <laughs> I'm sorry. So that's probably going to be left out, you know. <laughs> yeah, if you want to. All righty then. And we can, we can let people know that you don't have to be together all the time. Yes, that is true. You're allowed um, bathroom.